Evolution of Human Life. Three million years ago, primal foragers just lived day by day. No structure, no big plan. They stayed wherever felt safe enough, maybe under a tree, in a cave, or between some rocks. Not that it kept the rain or animals out much. At night, they'd sleep on leaves or animal skin or just the ground. No real sense of night or day, just tired or not. They ate whatever they could find, bugs, roots, fruit, sometimes dead animals they came across. Eventually, they figured out fire and started cooking, but before that, everything was raw. Most of the time was spent moving around, looking for food, trying not to get hurt, making rough tools out of whatever was around. Nobody was in charge. There were no rules. Just constant movement and doing whatever it took to stay alive. In 10,000 BC, hunter-gatherers didn't just survive, they started to think ahead. They moved with the seasons, stuck together, helped each other out. Their shelters were simple, made from animal skins or branches, easy to pack up and carry when it was time to follow food. At night they huddled near fires, sharing warmth, sleeping in groups. Meals weren't random anymore. They cooked what they caught, meat from the hunt, roots, wild fruits, stuff like that, and everyone ate together. The work was split depending on what needed to get done. Some hunted with spears, others gathered or made tools, whatever kept the group going. Around that time, people also started telling stories, doing rituals, even making early art. They were starting to become something more than just animals trying to stay alive. In 5000 BC, early farmers picked spots near rivers cause the land was good for planting stuff. They made little houses from mud and straw, packed close together like one big family yard. At night, they slept inside on mats or whatever animal skins they had, just trying to stay dry and warm. They mostly ate what they could grow, like grains and lentils, turned into thick porridge or flat bread, sometimes with a bit of milk if the goats or cows gave enough. Meat was rare, usually just when they had to kill one of the animals. Their days were busy planting, feeding animals, putting food away for later, trying their hand at new things like pottery or weaving. Life was steadier, yeah, but it also meant more work, more rules from the weather, and more trouble if the harvest went wrong. Between 3000 and 1000 BC, in the river valleys like Mesopotamia and the Indus, people started living close together in real cities, not just villages anymore. The streets had a bit of order. There were small markets here and there, and homes made from mud brick or stone lined up in rows. They didn't sleep on the ground anymore. Now they had wooden frames with cloth or straw to rest on, which probably felt like a luxury back then. Food was more predictable too. Mostly bread, lentils, some dates, and beer, sometimes fish from the river if they were lucky. Not everyone had to farm anymore. Some made pots. Others worked with metal. A few became priests or the ones who kept track of things by pressing marks into wet clay. Life wasn't easy. Never was. But at least now there were rules, shared beliefs, and a way to write stuff down so things didn't just disappear. In the time of Rome and Greece and Persia, your life really depended on where you stood. Some people had big homes with open courtyards and mosaic floors. Others squeezed into noisy apartments stacked over shops. Beds were usually wood, sometimes bronze if you had the money and you didn't always sleep alone. Eating was a different story too. Rich folks sat around with wine, meat, olives, cheese, while regular people mostly had bread or soup or whatever they could scrape together that day. What you did each day came down to class. Some joined the army, some ran shops, some read scrolls and argued about the universe, and then there there were millions who had no choice, just working and serving with no end in sight. Cities were loud and crowded but buzzing with stuff happening all the time. Courts, plays, speeches, temples going up, laws being argued, things constantly shifting and growing into the stuff that still shapes how we live now. During the nomadic horse era in Mongolia, people moved all the time, so nothing was ever really permanent. Home was a yurt, round and warm, made of felt and wood, easy to pack up and carry. They'd sleep on hides or just the ground, usually near their saddle or weapons, maybe next to a sibling or two. Food was whatever came from their animals, mostly boiled meat, dried cheese, sour milk, sometimes eaten cold during long rides. Farming didn't make sense in their world, they needed to stay mobile. Horses were everything, they rode them like extensions of their own body, used them to herd, hunt, raid, or fight. No one could match their speed or surprise. They didn't care about borders or rulers. What mattered was moving free, staying strong, and never getting stuck in one place too long. 
Most people in medieval times lived in cramped wooden huts. Nothing fancy, just enough to stay dry and warm. In the cold months, animals were often brought inside, not for love, just for body heat. The rich stayed in big stone castles with guards and thick walls while peasants huddled on straw piles or blankets, all together in one spot trying to sleep through the cold nights. Food was whatever they had, usually the same every day. Rough bread, some kind of gruel, a bit of boiled vegetables, and ale because the water wasn't safe. Meat was almost never around unless it was a special feast or holiday. Most people worked the land from dawn to dusk, or did jobs like fixing tools, grinding grain, or helping monks with whatever needed doing. Religion shaped everything, and life just kind of moved in the same cycle. Strict rules, not much choice, not much change. During the Islamic Golden Age, in cities like Baghdad or Cordoba or even Chang'an, people had homes that made sense for the heat, with open spaces inside, little pools or fountains to cool things down, shaded paths so you didn't cook under the sun. They didn't just crash on the floor anymore. Some had cushions or low wooden beds, sometimes with soft cloth thrown over them. Food was always changing depending on what you had, but often you'd find rice with bits of lamb or chicken, yogurt mixed with spices, maybe some fruit on the side. People weren't just farming or hunting to survive anymore. Some studied stars or how the body worked. Some sold silk or gold from far places. Some built stuff like water wheels or tried to help the sick. There were guards too, watching borders or gates. It was a busy time, kind of alive in a way that stretched far past just staying alive. During the Renaissance, in cities like Florence or Paris, people lived above their shops in narrow houses made of stone or brick with chimneys and wooden beams creaking above their heads. Beds got a bit fancier too, no more straw piles on the floor, they had frames now. Some even had curtains if you were lucky, or just cold. Food wasn't just about surviving anymore. They had meat, pies, bread straight from the oven, vegetables if the season allowed it, and wine pretty much every day. Work wasn't just farming or hauling stuff around. People carved things, painted, sold fabrics and spices from who knows where. Some taught in churches, others wandered off looking for new land. Life started to feel bigger, messier, more exciting, and people People were just trying to figure out what they could do with it all. In the early colonial days, where you lived said a lot. Some folks crammed into tiny timber shacks with smoke leaking through the roof, while others had these big houses on plantations with porches and servants. Sleep wasn't great for most, just a blanket on the floor or maybe a rough wooden bed if you were lucky. Food was whatever lasted, salted meat, stale bread, corn mush, beans, beer if you had it. Not tasty, but it kept you going. Work? That's where things really split. Settlers chopped trees and built homes from nothing. Sailors got tossed around at sea and half of them never made it back. Slaves were treated like tools, not people, forced to labor from sunup till dark. Meanwhile, rich planners just got richer off everyone else. It was rough, harsh, a lot of people just trying not to die. After scientific revolution and enlightenment, homes started to feel different, especially for the rich who now lived in solid brick houses with high ceilings, glass windows, even chandeliers hanging above their heads. The poor still stayed in plain cottages, nothing fancy. People were beginning to want their own rooms, their own space, so bedrooms became more common, and that kind of changed how privacy worked. Food showed the gap, too. Rich folks had course after course, meats and sauces, sweet stuff and wine. The rest mostly ate poor or dry bread, maybe some cheese if they were lucky. Jobs were shifting. Some people were off inventing things or writing theories. Others were filing papers in new government offices. And somewhere in the distance, you could already hear the sound of machines kicking in. In the growing cities of the Victorian era, middle-class folks stayed in clean rows of townhouses with gas lights flickering at night and usually a servant or two helping out. Bedrooms started looking the same, iron beds, lace on the windows, a dresser to keep your stuff. Eating became more proper, three meals, sit down, use the right fork, don't talk with your mouth full, and yeah, tea time was a big thing, especially if someone was visiting. Work changed too, people weren't just doing muscle jobs anymore. Now there were clerks buried in papers, engineers figuring out railways, teachers dealing with packed classrooms, and doctors finally starting to understand how bodies actually work. Everything had to make sense and be in the right place. People really like things to be clean, moral, and always improving. 
For most workers during Industrial Revolution, home wasn't much. Just a small, packed room in a row of brick houses or a dark corner in some noisy tenement. You'd sleep where you could, sometimes on a mattress with two or three others, and most nights, you barely got a few hours before the next shift started. Food, nothing special, maybe dry bread, a bit of meat if you were lucky, weak tea. Sometimes they threw leftovers into a pot and called it stew. Kids worked too, some barely old enough to talk. Factories never stopped. The machines kept roaring. The smoke never cleared, and people just pushed through it all, day after day. Streets were always loud, air thick with soot. Nobody really had time to think. Just work, eat, sleep if you could, then do it all again. In the early 20th century, most folks lived in small houses or cramped apartments, nothing fancy. But by then, they had plumbing that worked and lights that turned on without a fuss. Bedrooms were more personal now, beds had frames, mattresses were factory made and actually felt decent. Meals weren't exciting, but they got the job done. Stuff like canned beans, potatoes, salted meat, just whatever they could get, especially when food was rationed during the war. Jobs were tough, factories were packed, men got shipped off to fight, and a lot of women ended up doing doing the work they left behind. Things move fast, way too fast sometimes, and between the bombs and the changes and the pressure to just keep going, people barely had time to breathe. After the war, families started moving out to the suburbs where houses came with front lawns, driveways, maybe even a garage, and people got really into having their own TV and a decent car. Sleep got easier too, with springy beds, private rooms, and finally some peace and quiet. Meals were filling, lots of meat and potatoes, milk on the table, and more of those frozen or packaged foods that saved time. Jobs felt more stable than before. Dads mostly went off to office work, while moms were expected to stay home and keep the house in shape. Some people started getting into teaching, or the early tech stuff too. It was a time when life felt organized, kinda hopeful, like things were supposed to just keep getting better. During Cold War, some people crammed into tall apartment buildings. Others had quiet houses out in the suburbs, kind of just depended where you landed in the middle class thing. Bedrooms usually had a clock ticking, maybe a radio playing late at night, and mornings came early with school or office shifts. Eating wasn't fancy, just quick stuff like microwave meals, canned soup, burgers, soda, whatever was cheap and ready. Most folks worked in offices or factories, a lot of it connected to Cold War stuff like defense or tech, and unions still had teeth back then, so wages felt fair. Things seemed solid on the surface, but always a bit anxious too with that whole nuclear threat hanging around, even if life felt pretty comfortable most days. Early digital age in the 90s and early 2000s. Homes were getting packed with stuff. Internet cables, TVs in the bedroom, a phone always ringing somewhere, and random gadgets just showing up. People didn't really sleep like before. They'd stay up watching late night shows, or messing around online, or playing games till they forgot the time. Meals were whatever was fast and easy, like a frozen meal, leftover pizza, maybe some takeout if someone felt like calling. Jobs started turning into sitting in front of screens all day. More people answered answering phones in cramped offices, a few lucky ones figuring out how to work from home. Everything felt like it was speeding up, tech started showing up in weird places, and suddenly life didn't really have a clear off switch anymore. Smartphone era. People mostly lived in apartments or these smart homes packed with devices, phones on the counter, tablets on the bed, some voice assistant always listening and syncing stuff without asking, sleep got messed up, screens everywhere, people scrolling for no reason at 2am, getting pinged by random notifications that didn't matter, a lot just couldn't sleep right anymore, food turned into whatever was fast and specific, like vegan stuff, keto stuff, snacks that looked healthy, ordered from apps and dropped off in minutes. Work wasn't stuck in offices now, some bounced between random freelance jobs, others drove around or delivered stuff, and a few just opened their laptop in some Airbnb or cafe and called it work. Everything felt kind of mixed up, like there was no line between working and resting or even thinking straight, it was just always on. When the pandemic hit, everything just kind of collapsed into the house. Living rooms became offices, kitchens turned into classrooms, bedrooms were also gyms sometimes. People stayed up way too late, either stressed out or just stuck watching stuff or scrolling through bad news. Sleep got weird, like really weird, no real schedule anymore. Food shifted fast too, people started cooking again, either out of boredom or just survival, instant noodles, banana bread, that whole sourdough phase, all of it came back. Work was non-stop Zoom calls that never really ended and everyone 
everyone felt kind of burned out. Meanwhile, delivery people and hospital workers were still out there holding everything together. It was lonely, awkward, sometimes scary, and even now a lot of the weird habits from that time never really went away. After the pandemic, life started to settle into this tech-filled routine where the house was kind of everything at once. Work, exercise, chill, all in the same space with smart stuff doing half the tasks. Sleep wasn't just sleep anymore. People started tracking it like a score, using apps, wearing rings, trying gadgets that claimed to fix rest. Eating changed too, more planned out. Some used meal kits, others went for plant stuff or those trendy wellness foods. Intermittent fasting became a thing, work wasn't just one job job anymore either. People mixed roles, used AI to cut corners, picked up side gigs to make up for the rest. Everything felt quicker, more connected, but also scattered. It was like everyone was trying to stay in control, while everything kept shifting under their feet. Between 2025 and 2035, homes are expected to run almost entirely on AI, lighting, temperature, groceries, even moods adjusted by algorithms in real time. Sleep becomes a fully tracked metric with smart mattresses and wearables analyzing every movement and breath to fine tune rest. Meals shift toward efficiency and health guided by AI diet planning with lab grown meat and custom supplements replacing old habits. Most routine jobs are automated, leaving humans to supervise systems, solve problems, or lean into creative and strategic work. Life feels optimized but oddly hands off, with machines doing more and people adjusting to roles that are harder to define. After 2035, as the planet heats up and weather grows unpredictable, people shift into eco-homes built to resist floods, fires, or heat waves, some buried underground, others raised above danger zones. Sleep moves into compact pods with climate control tech, filtering noise, light, and temperature for efficient rest. Food becomes high-tech and resource conscious. Algae protein, lab-grown nutrients, and veggies from vertical farms replace traditional meals. Jobs center on survival and recovery. Climate engineers, clean energy workers, and those managing the automated systems that keep cities running. Life is about adapting fast, minimizing waste, and holding the line against a planet that's no longer stable. In 2050, with most labor handled by machines, people live in modular homes that adapt to needs and are often built or maintained by AI. Sleep is fine-tuned for mental health, using biofeedback systems that regulate when and how long you rest, not just how well. Meals are no longer about cooking, but about function. Custom nutrition packs, efficient and nearly waste-free, tailored to your biology. Work as it used to be known fades out. What remains is expression, exploration, and responsibility. Creating art, shaping ethical policies, and pushing humanity outward toward space. Life slows down, but meaning gets redefined. In 2070, humans start living beyond Earth in dome-covered colonies on Mars or artificial habitats orbiting planets. Homes are airtight, tightly regulated, and built for survival, not comfort. Sleep takes place in gravity-controlled pods with light systems that mimic Earth's cycles to keep the body synced. Food is no longer grown in soil, hydroponic farms grow greens in water systems, and protein comes from 3D printers or bioreactors. Work revolves around survival and expansion, terraforming harsh environments, fixing life support tech, and managing trade between planets. Life is isolating, scientific, and futuristic, but it's also the start of something entirely new. Nobody really knows what comes in 2100, but it's possible homes might not be physical at all. People could live in digital realms or shared neural networks. Sleep might become optional, bypassed through genetic upgrades or neural stimulation, or it might evolve into something more efficient and purposeful. Meals, if they still exist, could be replaced by direct energy absorption or cellular level nutrition, no cooking or chewing involved. Work may lose all meaning in the traditional sense. What remains could be philosophical reflection, deep exploration, of reality, or simply existing in ways we can't yet imagine, everything we know about being human might get rewritten. 